hey fellow animators, I am Ilochten. Welcome to part 2 of this tutorial series. This is where we are at. We have done bones for pelvis, spine and legs. Now let's move on. We will now do the basic setup for head, then move to the arms and later we will get back to the head again to do the details, like eyes, jaw and stuff like that. Ok, so add another spine to the chest, which will represent neck and head. Let's move the whole spine further up. For the neck, probably one bone will be enough. We can then start positioning the head bone. Neck seems pretty much alright, in the middle. So let's place the head bone. Display as box. The head might go somewhere here, somewhere below the ear and near the middle of the neck. Neck might even be a bit further back. Now it seems pretty much alright. We can change the shape of the head now with edit poly again. I really hope you understand what using edit poly means. The pivot of the bone will stay exactly where it is, below the ear, but we can now do any changes we want to the mesh of the bone. We could even make a sphere out of it if we want it. But the most important thing is that the pivot will not move and the bone will rotate around the point of rotation we have placed below the ear. This is basically just a visual thing we are doing now. Let's also change dimensions for the neck. And rename the bones. The color also. I am used to red for the head, but you find your own color. <laughs> ok, done, that was easy. Now let's do arms. Add one to the chest and I will just recolor it right away. I will again use blue for the left side and we can actually copy it from the leg we already have. Display as box. And the arm has several settings here. We can enable or disable the collar bone. Same for the palm. But of course, we want both of these bones for this rig, so let's keep them enabled. But in different rigs, you might want to disable them if needed. So just so you know, you have that option here. Now, setting up the arm will take some time, especially because of the fingers. But first, let's position the whole arm just generally to the place it should be. Doesn't have to be too precise just yet. Now, the palm is rotated like this, which doesn't match our model. But first, what we also need to add are the twist bones for the forearm. Select it and change number of segments to 3. Ok, now the forearm has 3 parts and you can see that the one closest to the palm is rotated the most, while the one near the elbow is rotated the least. That is the primary function of these twist bones. They are important for skinning because they give you a way to distribute the weight between all 3 bones and therefore deform the forearm much less for twisting movements but we will get to skinning later. We can do the same for the upper arm. Display as box. And now we can see better how the palm is rotated. If we rotate it 90 degrees to the right, you will notice that twist bones also got straightened up. So this is the default position. Let's now start placing the palm. But if we again look from this side, the palm needs to be rotated a bit to the side. This is not a problem and you don't have to worry about twist bones not being in a default aligned state. It's fine like this. Ok, so now the fingers. However, Cat doesn't have a specific option for creating metacarpal bones. Those are those fourth finger bones inside your palm. They are not that extremely important for every rig. You need them basically for a hand poses like this, when you are trying to do an U shape with your palm. So they are not needed every time, but because like I have mentioned, I want this rig to be flexible. I want to have them here, because who knows what you guys will want to try with this character. You might find them useful. So our only option here is to create fingers with 4 bones. Which is not a big issue, but I wanted to explain it a bit. Ok, let's shorten up the palm. Quite a lot. A lot more than you would think. Because here, we already want to have the finger bones. We of course would like to have 5 fingers. Display as box. And we also want fingers to have 4 bones instead of 3. 
Right, I could do displays box after I change this, but well. Okay, now let's start placing them. And this will take some time. Let's start with the middle finger here. Move it. Change the length of the bones. By the way, you can also change the length just by moving the bones like this. Or by the length parameter on the side. And what we focus on here, when setting up the length, is where the finger actually bends in the modeled mesh. The mesh shows us where to place the pivots. Also, this is a bit off, so rotate it a bit. Move it. And generally, just try to place the finger as the mesh suggests. Not much to say or explain here. It's what we have been doing so far with the whole rig. So somewhere here is the finger joint, so I also placed the pivot there. Same for the next part. And also the last one. It's very simple, but it just takes time. Maybe even twist it a bit. Which now offsets it again from the top view, so fix that. It's not necessary to be extremely precise, but you still want it to be as precise as possible. This seems pretty alright. And now we can speed it up a little by copying this finger and pasting it to another one. It will of course not place it precisely as we need to, but it gives us a nicer start and less further modifying. So do exactly the same thing as with the first finger, nothing too special here anymore. One thing I could mention here is, maybe you have noticed it with the first finger as well, if you want to move the finger, select all four finger bones and they will move nicely together. But on the other hand, if you want to rotate, don't rotate with all four finger bones selected, because this will happen. When you rotate, select just the first one and rotate that one. That way it will not modify the other finger bones. Ok, so like I have said, it's the same thing. Just set correct lengths to match the bending of finger in the mesh. And also keep the pivot somewhere in the middle of the fingers. That's basically it. When done, just move to the next one and again. Check all the sides every time. So the length should be much shorter. We can also shorten it like this by moving the bone in the viewport. Which might actually be what you will prefer more, so try it like this as well. And for the last finger I will speed the video a bit, because again it's the same thing. Now only the thumb is remaining. For that we of course just need 3 bones, don't know why I have said it to 4 before. And now what we need to find out is how the fingers bend together. Select everything by double clicking on the palm bone and then again clicking on it with ALT pressed to remove it from the selection, so only the fingers are selected. And now rotate the fingers around the Z axis, the blue one, and we can see that the thumb is rotating this way, together with the rest of the fingers. We don't want that, but after finding this out, we know which way to rotate the thumb, so all the finger bones match. So rotate it this way, and let's set the lengths to be similar at least. And now again, the same process we are all too familiar with already. And after this we can consider the hand to be finished. Just recheck if the fingers really rotate the way they should. Just be careful to try it with the local coordinate system selected of course. After this we can move to the rest of the arm. But that should be very easy after what we went through with the fingers. Set the elbow. I actually don't like to move these bones in this axis. If it's not needed don't do it also. Ok, wait, let's actually move it to the edge below. 
but that's just a detail. Now the upper arm. By the way, you can see that with arm I have also done the palm first, similar to the leg. But here it actually doesn't matter because we don't have an IK platform created yet. But I still like it more to start with the palm first. So only the upper arm and carbon left. Set them up and finish up by changing the dimensions. <sighs> Alright, that should be the whole arm. We can now just add another arm to create a copy of the first one. Change the color to green by copying it from the leg. And same as with the leg, rename the L arm to arm L and of course the right side as well. The last thing remaining for arms are IK platforms. Same as the legs have down here, we want them for arms too, as they are not created by default. For that we need to select the palm and head to the fourth panel, the motion panel. Here you will find create IK target button. It will create this small cross, which you can change to platform if you want, in the modify panel. It will probably be the same size as the foot one, so resize it to something useful. And do the same for the right arm as well. Ok, the arms are done. And now this is what I would call a basic rig. Rig with number of bones like this would be quite animatable. We don't have any bones for eyes and mouth now for example, but if you would want to do just some parkour animations with a camera quite zoomed out, this amount of bones would be sufficient. However, what I would like to show you now before we start rigging the head is a sneak peek of how will this rig, these bones we have created, deform the mesh later on, because now it's just separated mesh with separated bones created. If you try to move any of them, you will see that the mesh is not doing anything. So let's unfreeze the mesh so we can select it. And select the body. Go to the modifiers and apply a skin modifier. You can press S key several times to find it faster. Skin modifier is very important. It sets weights for each vertex of the mesh. Every single vertex of the 3D model has to have values saved of how much should any of the bones affect it. And the process of setting these values is called skinning. Not to be confused with a Christmas skin for your Fortnite character. This has nothing to do with skins in games. They just use the same word but it's something completely different. Well anyway, skinning will be discussed in much more detail in later episodes of the series. For now I just wanted to show you how it works and why we actually create these bones. So for the skin modifier you need to add bones. Add the bones you want the mesh to have relationship with. So in this case, because we are skinning the whole body, it's basically all the bones we have created so far. So select everything, but deselect the IK platforms. Because they are just helpers. Their function is to affect the rig, not the mesh. Also, don't select the cat triangle here, but because we have it hidden, it doesn't appear here in this list anyway. Now immediately after you move any bone, you will see the difference that the mesh is more or less moving with the bones. It's just the default skin though and that will always be terrible. It will need a lot of adjusting but you can see that the character is deforming. Also we have applied it just to the body so the hair mesh is obviously not doing anything. Ok, if you would now go to the skin modifier and enable edit envelopes, you can see the weights of individual bones. For example here, you can see the weight distribution of the pelvis. Further from the bone it has almost zero weight, but near the middle it has nearly 50%. However, this is something we will discuss in much much more detail later on. For now, I just wanted you to have an idea of how it will all work in the end. Ok, we will not need a skin modifier for now, so delete it from the mesh and let's continue with rigging the rest of the character. Select the head bone, make sure you are in the modify panel and click on add bone to add a general cat bone to the head. It might seem like nothing happened, but the new bone is probably hidden inside the head. This new bone will be the jaw. So let's place it. First just look at the pivot and position it somewhere under the ear. Then just change the dimensions and name and done. Maybe we could actually move it a bit further, like so. Ok, that was easy, now the eyes. Again add a bone to the head and start placing the eye. You want to move the pivot to the exact center of the eyeball mesh. You want to be as precise as you can, but don't stress about it too much. You can use the mesh edges as a guide.
Again, change the dimensions and name and done. Next, add another bone for the other eye. But now we can copy the right eye by clicking here. Let's also freeze the meshes again so we don't keep selecting them. So copy the bone settings, select the other bone and hit the second paste button as mirror. Done. Rename. Displays box. Now the eyelids. Add a new bone. And now we want to align it to the first eye. For that click on this button here or just press Alt plus A. That is a useful shortcut to remember by the way. Click on the eye and align all the position axes, rotation axes and choose pivot point as a reference for both. That is important. Now the bone is exactly in the same place as the eye. What we want to do now is to resize it a bit and rotate it up. Rename. Do the same for the other eyelid by copying the settings. Why did I keep them so long though? New bone. Align it to the eye. Well actually no, let's copy the upper eyelid and paste it to this. Not as mirrored now though. And rotate it downwards. But now when we select both the eyelids and try to rotate them around their local z-axis, they will rotate together. So what I usually do is to rotate the lower eyelid by 180 degrees. And now they open and close together. Ok, now again copy, paste, rename, displays, box and all that stuff. You know the drill by now already. I also changed the colors for eyes but kept the eyelids red so they are better distinguishable when you will be selecting them. Ok, let's take a look at the mouth now. Let's unhide it and freeze it. Actually, let's disable frozen in grey first. And also for the hair while we are at it, so they are the color they should be. Ok, so what do we have? Upper teeth, lower teeth and a tongue. So, now we will add bones to the jaw, because we want lower teeth and tongue to be a children of jaw and not head. Let's start with the tongue. We can even hide the head to see better. Let's make it shorter, because the tongue will actually have three bones. Even though it might not seem it needs that many, we want to be able to move just the tip of the tongue for example if we want it. Make it a bit shorter and add a new one again and make that one even shorter. Let's make them smaller. That's too small actually, I want them to be easily selectable. Rename and that's it. Next we have teeth. Even though it might seem strange, we actually want to have a bone for each of them, upper and lower, to be able to move them up and down or back and forth. Add a bone to the head this time, because we want upper teeth to be a child of the head. The size of the bone here is not that relevant, just make it so it fits. For the lower teeth, add a bone to the jaw again to be a child of the jaw. You can of course always relink it later, but this way you save yourself a few clicks. We can now copy the upper teeth and paste it. But the bone will be elsewhere because they have a different parent, so just move it back to match the teeth. Displays box and we have eyes and mouth done. 
Let's unhide the body and the last thing we have remaining are the eyebrows. Eyebrows will be a bit strange maybe, but not hard. Add a bone. Let's copy the eye settings just to speed things up. Ok, this one will be eyebrow R main. I will explain. Let's resize it first. This will be the parent of all the rest of the eyebrow bones. Something like this. Now add a bone to this one. This will be eyebrow R. Make it a bit smaller. And let's align it back to the main one. Now the parent bone moves both of them, but the second one can be moved separately. That's what we want. So now we will add new bones for eyebrow R. Let's make it small and rename it to eyebrow R1. Move it somewhere here and add a new bone. Copy settings of the first one, move it again and rename. And do this for 5 bones. Ok, so we have 5 bones. Now let's position them more precisely. This one to the corner, this one next to it, this one somewhere to the middle, next one here and the last one again to the corner. Now check out the other sides and correct them. Now the rotations, something to just follow the shape of the eyebrow and also check them from other views. Ok, that's it. Now I will change the colors. Unfortunately, you have to do them one by one. The parent I will keep red. Ok, great. Now add a new bone to the head and check this out. Copy the settings of this bone, paste it as mirrored and watch the mirror clan fold. The whole other eyebrow is created with all the settings. We just need to change the colors and names, but it saved a ton of time regardless. And this is it. We have almost everything done. I just want to add one more thing that is kind of optional. Add a bone to pelvis. Align it to pelvis, even though it should be by default, but just to make sure. Resize it to be a bit bigger than pelvis. Add edit poly modifier to it, to just change it to something like this. Ok, so this bone, what will it do? It will be called pelvis helper, and with this bone, we will have an ability to rotate the pelvis of the character separately from spine and legs. The pelvis bone will affect the whole rig, as it should. But the pelvis helper will be able to rotate this area without affecting the rest of the rig. It will make more sense during the skinning, so don't worry about it too much if you didn't understand its purpose just yet. Well anyway, with this done, the whole rig is finished. We have added bones for everything we want to have an ability to move during the animation. If we decide to add something later, it's still possible, but you save yourself a headache with fixing the skin later on if you add everything you want now, before the skinning process is started. Ok, so let's end this part of the video here. For those who have made it this far, congratulations, you have managed to create a full rig for a character that was just a static mesh so far. That's an achievement unlocked right there. But we have to get all the achievements and finish this, right? So let's continue to the next part. I'm Miloš Černý and thank you for watching.